take a look at the picture behind me. Is that thing there alive or not? It's actually part of a coral reef. Are coral reefs alive? That's a good question for you to think about. As we look at the characteristics of living things, let's go through them. First off, living things are organized. Highly organized, in fact. Take a look at this picture. I'll, I'll get out of the way here. Here you have a picture of Escherichia coli, a bacteria. It has six electric motors. It has its own power station. It can make a copy of itself in 20 minutes. It has a volume of 2 times 10 to the negative 12 cubic centimeters, extremely small. 4 billion can fit on the head of a pin. That's what I call real nanotechnology. Well, so living things are organized. And organized into different levels as well. So let's focus on this for a second. Like our friend uh, E. coli, that's what we call unicellular. In other words, it's made out of one cell. However, many organisms are multicellular, which means they consist of organisms that are, excuse me, cells that are working together uh, at many different levels. There's many cell types. In fact, if you were to take a look at a mosquito, there's over 50 different types of cells uh, just in a mosquito. The cell structure is very complex, and there's different levels of organization, so these cells are acting together to provide for those life functions that you've been learning about. There are also interdependent systems as well. In other words, that organism can't survive unless those systems are working together in a coordinated fashion. So you have the whole organism as a whole. And within each organism, there's systems of organisms that are coordinated together to provide specific life functions. And within those, of course, you have organs. Within each organ, you have a variety of different tissue types that are working together to provide the functions that that organ does. And again, it goes all the way down to the level of the cell. Uh, which you're going to be looking at in greater detail. So let's make it real clear. Cells are highly organized things. They also have a genetic code. So you can see all the instructions for building and maintaining cell parts using energy reproduction. They're all contained in a genetic code. And this code is recorded into very co complex molecules uh, of DNA. Not only are cells organized and um, contain a genetic code, but all living things also have the ability to acquire materials and energy, like this guy here having lunch, or like these piglets having breakfast, or like this dust mite here that's eating dead skin cells from you. Hope you cleaned your room recently. Also, living things reproduce, just like this sea turtle. They all make more living things, which is what reproduction is. They can do that sexually, in other words, males and females working together to reproduce, or asexually, in the case of our bacteria that we looked at either. A couple different ways they can do that. Something known as binary fission, where you have um, an organism basically splitting into two organisms, or something known as budding that you can see in yeast cells, where uh, the new organism kind of pinches off of the first. So we have reproduction. So we get little piglets uh, or dandelions from these dandelion seeds that blow off or a baby turtle. So living things are made out of cells. They have a genetic code. They reproduce. They have a metabolism. They also adapt to their environment. Uh, this is probably the most obvious feature of living things because they respond in different ways. Um, if you poke at something with a stick, it's going to move, isn't it? That's what you consider a stimulus when you poke something with a stick. Uh, and you get a response. What do you think these sea geese in the background, what do you think they're responding to? They're flocking together. Could it be the changes in the seasons? What about this dog? You can see it's responding to something. Um, and so seasonal change is going to be uh, certainly a stimulus in the environment of a living thing that's going to get a response from it. And that's what living things do. They respond to their environment. In this case, these snow geese, they're going to uh, migrate thousands of miles uh, as they go through their life cycle. So living things also respond to their environment, but they also maintain an internal 
environment. We call that homeostasis. Like the sea anemone has an internal environment um, that it's going to maintain. All the cells that make up that organism are going to maintain that environment so the chemistry of life can continue to occur uninterrupted by the environment that surrounds that organism. Now, you do this too, but you may not realize it. The last time you ate, your, the sugar in your blood increased, and that's managed by, among other things, the cells that are in your pancreas that put out insulin. We'll look at that more in detail. Most organisms maintain homeostasis by a process known as a negative feedback loop. You can see two pictured here. In other words, a process is initiated if some particular feature of that organism runs too high. If that feature runs too low, another process um, gets involved as well. So when something's going wrong, we call that negative. And that negative feedback loop is going to produce a change to bring that organism back in line to what it needs to be inside. We'll look at that more in detail later. Also living things, they grow and they develop. They go through, uh, they get larger uh, in mass as they go through their life cycle. And they also change their distinct patterns that we can see. You've probably heard of metamorphosis before. Uh, but all living things produce some sort of change over the course of their lifetime, uh, like these trout that you see in the background, or like this little fledgling eagle that you can see. When eagles come out of the egg, obviously they're not uh, able to jump out of the nest and fly away. Well, they have to mature. And, and so living things go through a particular change. Not all trout are going to look like this one that you see pictured at the bottom of the screen. So living things grow and they develop um, over their course of their lifetime. So what do living things do? They reproduce. They're organized into cells. They have a genetic code. They use matter and energy, what we call metabolism. They maintain a constant internal environment we call homeostasis. They increase in their mass and they change throughout their life cycle. So that's what living things are. Thanks for watching.